one minute until showtime. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Welcome to the At The IP Show. This is an astronomy-based podcast that is devoted to discussing astronomical equipment, stargazing tips, observing reports, and equipment reviews. We don't focus on the science of astronomy. There are plenty of shows that do that. The focus of At The IP is the visual observers, those backyard stargazers that enjoy taking their telescopes under the stars, and those individuals wishing to join our ranks. After all, what matters to stargazers is what's at the eyepiece. And good evening out there once again, my fellow backyard stargazers, and welcome to this episode. This is at the eyepiece, episode number 75 for May 5th, 20. 13. I'm your host, John Kramer, going to be on here with you for the next 30 minutes or so, thereabouts, as we go ahead and talk about some interesting topics. At least I thought they were going to be interesting for this particular episode tonight. We're going to be sharing NEF 2013 information, uh, basically what I've been able to find on the internet. Uh, yours truly was not able to attend this year again but I sure hope to go ahead and maybe attend 2014. All kind of depends on if, uh, if the planets align, so to speak. Uh, certainly this year, uh, things kind of worked against me very late, uh, close to NEEF 2013, but um, we do have a lot of great material that I have found online from different forums and a number of great uploads from folks out there that did attend the event personally uploaded to Facebook or uh, and YouTube in particular. We'll go ahead and we'll be sharing that information with you. In addition, um, we're going to go ahead and be talking about a fantastic application that I found. If you are a solar imager in particular, uh, you will find Dave's Solar Recorder, a very interesting and very worthwhile application for you to add to your astronomical toolbox, so to speak, for imaging if, uh, if you want to do that. And of course, I do a lot of online broadcasting too, as often as I can, and you will also find that Dave's solar recorder works out very, very well in that regard too. Well, it's been a while since we did a show, and uh, the weather here in Middle Tennessee has been extremely intermittent. Not a whole lot of observing time. In fact, the last few few days we've had nothing but solid clouds. Sure hope you've been fending a little bit better. The sun has been putting on a number of fantastic uh, uh, events lately. Sunspots as well as some decent prominences, etc. Uh, we'll be kind of, if time permits, we'll go ahead and share a little bit on those uh, as time permits near the end of the show. So I hope you have the opportunity to get out and to observe. And of course. Uh, if you're into deep sky this time of year, uh, I do have a great website for you to go to, a YouTube channel from a friend of mine that uh, you will go ahead and find some great information 
uh, on galaxies, which right now is probably one of the best objects for you to go ahead and, and observe out there in the uh, May night sky. Also, sure hope you had the opportunity to catch the meteor shower, too, that happened uh, uh, yesterday and uh, probably a little bit trailing into this evening as well. Uh, again, I have not been able to go ahead and get that observing done. Uh, usually, nighttime observing has been out. So uh, good luck to you. Hopefully, you have some better, better luck and some clear skies for that. So let's go ahead and get on to our NEF 2013 coverage. By the way, I am doing the show live here on Blog Talk Radio. In addition, I am also doing this live from the Google Plus Hangout, and it will be a video posted up later on here on my personal John Kramer YouTube channel, as well as the official YouTube channel for At The Eyepiece, appropriately named At The Eyepiece. So I certainly hope that you go ahead and uh, subscribe to either either or really, I would probably recommend subscribing to at the eyepiece, uh, only because I try to duplicate everything there as well. And since that's the official page uh, for the show, it's a little bit more appropriate. So you get to see everything that I'm talking about here, as well as those individuals that are listening live on the podcast or later on through podcast services such as iTunes, which we are on, by the way. And if you listen to the show and you like it and you do have an iTunes account, please go ahead. Feel free to go ahead and leave a uh, recommendation or rating on that as well. I would really appreciate that. Of course, if you have, you have, if you have any other feedback too, we're always welcome to go ahead and receive that too. Just some, simply uh, send an email to at the IPs at gmail.com. So, NEF 2013 is officially done and in the books. Uh, of course, this occurred on April uh, of this past month, uh, or last month rather, and initially, from what I was viewing online and in my initial research here uh, from a lot of the forums that I try to go ahead to, initial reports at least were coming in very mixed. In fact, I would probably say for the first maybe few days at least, there was a number of reports that talked about how there really seemed to be lower numbers overall at this year's NEF. So that was a little bit disappointing. However, now that we are up to May 5th here and more people have been able to chime in, it certainly seems that the now the majority of reports coming in for NEF 2013 has been more on the positive side. Uh, very good numbers. Uh, in fact, here is uh, one of the quotes here from Al Nagler. You know, Nagler eyepieces there, Teleview, yes, he was there, of course, with Teleview, and a number of things we'll get on here on the show. His, uh, he's providing now, or Teleview is providing the optics now for the new Skylight Instruments 4-inch F13 long focal length refractor, which was a beauty at NEF 2013. And uh, this was a more or less a, a post from a fellow backyard stargazer that did attend NEF 2013 and is really answering some of the uh, some of the original posts from individuals that said uh, that attendance was a bit thin this year. And this is a quote that I'm reading directly from Al Nagler. FYI, Teleview dealers did very well in sales at NEF 2013 with some reporting best ever results. First, biggest kudos to the team. That's the Rockland Astronomy Club and those individuals that go ahead and coordinate NEF. It was a joy to participate this year. I'm only sorry I didn't have time to get around and say hello to all the vendors. I suggest we send an appropriate thank you email to all vendors. And that was from Al Negler, Chairman and CEO of Teleview Optics. So, of course, that is very, very encouraging um, from this year, too. Now, best ever sales results, that's good. I would say it's probably safe to say, in my opinion, this year's NEF was... There wasn't a whole lot of buzz for new equipment, uh, and certainly there was a number of large manufacturers and really very prevalent 
people that usually participate in NEAF over the years that were absent. In particular, I'll just read off a few here that were absent from this year's NEAF that I thought was pretty significant. Lunt Solar Telescopes, uh, arguably one of the, 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 the biggest manufacturers of solar telescopes out there. I thought that was kind of odd that they were out. But then again, they do have the um, Pacific uh, telescopes show that they might try to be focusing on more or less. But uh, certainly they were probably missed this year, uh, especially with all the solar activity going on. Orion uh, telescopes was not in attendance this year at NEF 2013. Astronomics. I've touched a base. I've touched on this a few times on a previous episode. Astronomics, arguably one of the best astronomical equipment vendors out there, distributors, etc., and certainly someone that is right there uh, in our uh, astronomy community because they host and they support and run Cloudy Nights, which is the best uh, solar or, or astronomy-based rather. Um, form out there, they were absent. There were some personal issues with some of the uh, main people there with them, I think regarding finals around college time, something along those lines, and uh, Night Skies Network. So there's a few notable folks that didn't come this year. Also, um, someone that has been a big supporter of the NEF Solar astronomy party that uh, takes place on Saturdays and Sunday. Stephen Ramsden with the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project did not make it either this year up there to, uh, to NEEP 2013. So I'm sure a lot of people, uh, even though from some of the pictures that you'll see here shortly too, uh, there was a, a decent amount of scopes out there still uh, at the Solar um, Astronomy Star Party. But being that he's part of the largest uh, arguably the largest solar astronomy outreach project that is out there today. I'm sure his present was, presence was, uh, was missed from this year's event. But, um, you know, if you want to find out some more information for yourself, you know, Sky and Telescope here, I have it up on the screen now for our YouTube viewers and YouTube, uh, YouTube guests on the Google Plus Hangout. Here, the uh, We Are Astronomers Who Say NEF. This was uh, an article written up by Sky and Telescope, basically more or less as an overview of this year's NEF. Now, they usually also follow up and post a, a number of walkthrough videos uh, themselves uh, for NEF, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting, um, getting those. Hopefully, they go ahead and they do that this year as well. Now, if you're wanting to find information for yourself on a number of the topics that we're being, uh, going to be talking here on NEF, uh, as I've kind of touched on before, cloudynights.com, and they have a specialty forum dedicated to only talking about NEF itself. And that's where I've gotten a lot of the information that I'm going to be covering from this evening, as well as some of the online research that I've been able to do. Now, we have said before in the past here where there was a number of uh, individuals have uh, thought that there was some uh, thinning out, so to speak, of the herds for NEF, but we have a number of folks here. The good thing is uh, they posted up their personal opinions and their experiences here. Uh, preliminary estimates are showing that NEF 2013 was good, was a great success actually, with record attendance for many vendors boasting record sales. So that's fantastic. That is certainly awesome. And I'm a bit surprised actually uh, from that. Members or many vendors have already praised NEF 2013 for having a comfortable and smoothly run atmosphere. Now, the good thing about this particular information is the Rockland Astronomy Club, as well as NEF itself, both of these organizations are um, nonprofit organizations. So the numbers that we're talking about here will eventually be made public, and we can go ahead and verify that information too. But that's very, very uh, encouraging information. Here was a, a gentleman that attended. This was their third year 
uh, for NEF attendance. And what he had brought out was that there was a little bit lack of some of the vendors, as I noted earlier. Uh, he also mentioned, in particular, Explorer Scientific uh, seemed to have more or less a very toned down atmosphere at their booth. You might recall last year's show here on at the IPs when I talked about NEF 2012, I was raving about how um, Explorer Scientific had brought up that trailer and they were showcasing their uh, fantastic refractors, but they also had a Dobsonian telescope that uh, so far has not actually come out yet. I'm not sure where that stands. Don't know, can't tell you, don't have the inside information on that. Um, but there was a number of other vendors here that certainly made up for the information. So let's go through here on a couple of the highlights here. Now, as I have read through uh, a number of posts, remember I was discussing about how Al Nagler and Teleview are now going ahead and producing the optics for one of the a Skylight Instruments long focal length premium refractors. And of course, he was very busy. This is Al Magler, very busy at NEF, no doubt showcasing the AR101 F15 with optics by Teleview. That's, uh, if you can get an opportunity to head on over to skylight.myshopify.com. Skylight.myshopify.com, you can see this telescope for yourself. It is a real beauty of an instrument. Uh, beautiful red color, almost candy apple red, with gold trim. It looks really sharp. Stands out very, very well. And that's real good for Skylight Instruments that no doubt had a pretty good amount of traffic there specifically for that instrument and a number of their other instruments that they no doubt, no doubt had. Also, I found it very interesting that a number of people in the forums actually talked about Teeter's telescopes. Now, who is this? This is uh, Teeter's Telescopes makes premium Dobsonian telescopes. One of the highlights from the show was a discussion on a brand new uh, telescope from Teeter. It's basically a 10-inch travel scope. And I think we also here have a video online here. Uh, you'll have to go ahead. If you go to uh, uh, YouTube and you look up Dan Landis, by the way, those of you who are listening to the podcast can't see some of the video that I'm going to be sharing next here on the Google Plus Hangout. Uh, but if you head there to that, you'll be able to go ahead and see this wonderful custom-made 10-inch travel telescope by Teeter. He also came out with a, a, a number of other instruments. He has a very, very broad range uh, of instruments. And oh, let me let me back up just one bit. Dan Landis, his channel, uh, he has a lot of great videos here that I'm going to be referencing from NEF 2013. So he's one of the individuals that you really have to go ahead and thank for posting up these videos from NEF. So Dan, if you ever listen to the show here, I want to personally say thank you. Uh, the videos are great and uh, well uh, put together and are very clear and really showcase a lot of the instruments that we're going to go ahead and be talking about. So Teeter's Telescopes, they came out with a, a few uh, different instruments and just hopping on over to his page you know he has solid tube series which are more uh, uh, you know, as the name implies custom Dobsonian instruments in a solid tube classic ones he also has sub F4 instruments uh, these are by the way very popular today and uh, he does very very beautiful work so hats off to him um, the 10 inch by the way F Five travel telescope is called the TT Journey, and he is also coming out with a bare bones instrument called the TT Stark. Not a whole lot of information on that, but if you go on over to TeetersTelescopes.com for yourself, you'll be able to find out more information. So uh, hats off to him for getting a number of people 
uh, different people on the forums mentioning how well his instruments looked and how well of a presence he had over there at NEF 2013. Another one is Weight Research. Uh, this individual produces, again, custom Dobsonians, but large custom Dobsonians. And uh, if you head on over to weightresearch.com, that's W-A-I-T-E research, you'll see what he brought to Neef, which is no doubt getting a, a good, some good thoughts and reviews out there, a 20-inch F3 instrument. Looking at the instrument, uh, really, it, it's, it's awesome to have a 20-inch instrument. No longer do you have to climb up a ladder in the middle of the night to get the views that you're looking for. This is a 20-inch F3. It is, I don't know how how big Mr. Wade is here, but uh, it's certainly the eyepiece looks to be very, very low. Certainly you don't need a ladder probably to go ahead and look through it. So that would be a spectacular experience to take a look through a 20-inch F3 instrument. So him and Teeter are are uh, two premium Newtonian uh, or premium uh, Dobsonian manufacturers that are coming out with some great things uh, from Neef this year. Another one that deserves some mention uh, that was from the forums is, again, we're back to another premium Dobsonian manufacturer, New Moon Telescopes. Uh, really sharp-looking instruments, and again, very, very popular are the larger uh, aperture scopes with much, much faster optics. The reason that we're able, they're able to do that is... Uh, simply the, the quality of the instruments that are being able to, to make those mirrors, they're being made lighter nowadays, and they have some other ways of making the coma correction, such as the Teleview Paracore, that really make these instruments something that every amateur can go ahead and enjoy. So hats off to all of these manufacturers. Now, a number of the larger manufacturers that have also had a number of presents there, Celestron, of course, they released their AVX mount and a number of scopes that go along with the AVX mount, so that was a busy booth, I'm sure. The AVX is certainly uh, doing well in sales, at least from uh, what I can tell from a perspective of the forums. Uh, there was a number of AVXs, however, that I see with hand controller problems, but it seems to be that Celestron is, is making good on their service and getting those hand controllers replaced. Very few I've seen had to actually get the whole mount shipped back to Celestron, but just wanted to share that there with that. Of course, Mead brought their LX600 series, no doubt their new upgraded fixed, updated, whatever way you want to go ahead and put it, LX850s out there. I sure wish that they would go ahead and get a lot more social media buzz going on these instruments, though. Uh, put some videos up, guys. Put something out there to show these instruments in real-world uh, usage and getting used, please. Uh, and we've also talked about before on the show, iOptron. Now, uh, if you go to iOptron's website or our actually YouTube channel, you will go ahead and see the mount in action here. And for those of you that are on the Google Plus Hangout right now or able to catch that video later on, we are sharing that right now. Really a very innovative design. I've talked about it before. It was really pretty cool. Uh, so hats off to iOptron. Won't show the whole video here. We're, we're getting closer on our time. But the iOptron ZEQ25 go-to mount from iOptron really is getting a lot of positive feedback as well online. Now, if you want to go ahead and check out some of these videos for yourself, head on over to YouTube. Uh, look up the iOptron channel for their channel. Look up the uh, uh, Landis uh, that I had mentioned previously as well as uh, m another video here, which is a Neef 2013 tour in 11 minutes. I'll have all of these links, by the way, for you uh, from, sh pre uh, from show notes here, uh, from the show here that, that we're going to go ahead and do. So we'll go ahead and have all of that information for you as well. The Neef video tour in 11 minutes I especially like. Also, 
And again, this is more along the benefit of those that are watching the show live or on the YouTube later on here. I have up on the screen a picture that someone took here of Neef, Neef on, uh, I believe it was Saturday, and it does show some healthy, healthy numbers as far as people uh, going at the booth. So that's very, very encouraging there. Also, last but not least, if you want a great um, Flickr set to look through of Neef 2013, uh, look no further than what uh, is on here from Dennis Davis. Uh, shout out for Mr. Dennis Davis there for putting together a fantastic Flickr review of his travels to Neef. So if you have Flickr, you need to check that out too. So overall, I think you had a little bit of a slow start with Neef 2013, but it looks like Neef 2013 was a really good success. So thanks to those individuals that put that together, and we're already looking forward to Neef 2014. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about Dave's Solar Recorder. Now, uh, those of you that know, I recently picked up uh, a Coronado Solar Max 60 and an imaging source DMK21. This is a monochrome camera. Now, the reason that you want monochrome is simply because all of the pixels that are in that camera are dedicated to the resolution of what you're trying to image. With the Sun and HA, you're only getting one. You're, you're only getting one color anyway, so all the resolution is there. But when you're trying to go ahead and share those views with others, particularly during outreach, the black and white images, the monochrome images, they don't get the reaction as does true color images, something that you can fix up, you know. They want to see that, and that's one of the biggest things, and that's one of the biggest reasons that I really looked online for something, because when I'm on either Night Skies Network or the Google Plus Hangouts, it really does get people to go, wow, I think a little bit more when they're seeing it in a colorized fashion. I had stumbled across this uh, particular website from starrydave.com, found his Dave Solar Recorder, and it is exactly the product that I was looking for. This thing is really quite neat. In a nutshell, what it does is if, it, if you have a monochrome camera, that's black and white basically, right? It can go ahead and take multiple streams of that video. And if you are familiar with hydrogen alpha, keep with me here, you have to have a certain exposure in hydrogen alpha imaging of the sun to catch surface detail, filaments, uh, facula, wh whatever it is, spokes, whatever it is on the surface of the sun itself. You have to keep a certain exposure with a certain amount of uh, gamma, et cetera, for that. To catch the prominences is a completely different exposure. So a lot of times you have to show surface detail and then you have to change the exposure to see uh, prominence detail, but never combine them in the two. Well, guess what? That is exactly what Dave Solar Recorder does. And it even goes further. So one camera, you can now get both surface detail exposure set perfectly as well as prominence detail. But it takes it a little bit further. It even permits you to colorize these images in real time. It's a great, great product. It's really pretty easy to download. Uh, well, correction, it, it, you, you need a little help with finding the proper download here. So if you go to Dave Solar Recorder, if you go to starrydave.com, S-T-A-R-R-Y Dave.com, and you look for his Dave's Solar Recorder, you're going to see a link there near the top of the page that says User Manual, including instructions. If you click on that, the link to actually download the product is in this PDF. You have to scroll down a little bit. This looks to be page three of that, and there is a clearly marked download the zipped DSR package here. That'll actually get you the product on the computer. I have had a number of people uh, say that you know they can't find the download link, and it took me for a moment too. 
once you download it, it's very simple, executable to install. There are some prerequisites that he elaborates there on the 90 site. Seconds. But once you do, uh, it's really straightforward. I don't have the. I will be doing a show on live capabilities of this product. By the way, that'll be a YouTube pre-recorded type of thing. Uh, but for this particular uh, podcast and live episode here, uh, I'm just able to show some of the screens now. One of the, as I mentioned, the cool factor about Dave Solar System Recorder or Dave Solar Recorder is that it has the ability to colorize the images. Seconds. And it's not just one color. You have a great variety of color that you can choose. One of my favorites is a yellowish sun with a bluish background. That really, to me, gives the best view. And what's great is I can save those settings and then pick the default settings, the settings that I def just saved, like I name it yellow with blue background, and then I also have another background that's a big favorite of mine because I just think it looks really cool, is a very, very deep orange sun with a black background. And I'll play a little bit of this here on the YouTube channel for everybody that is viewing here, and you get to see Ten exactly seconds. what I'm talking about. If you head on over to at the eyepiece.com, you'll be able to see some of the videos that I've loaded up myself that shows Dave's solar recorder in action. It's a lot of fun. I do recommend playing with those colors and those exposures to get the best possible amount of contrast and features for you, both on the disc as well as the prominences have different sets of colors. Sometimes the colors are going to show off surface detail uh, more or less versus the other. You can load them up at your convenience. It's really, really an easy uh, product to go ahead and use. Uh, it only has a, you know, it only has a certain number of features, settings, capture, and post-processing. Not sure what post-processing is. I really haven't messed with that. But the view permits you to go ahead and you can capture and record, by the way, in AVI, your raw monochrome files. If you prefer raw monochrome, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and record that just as you would before and process those as you want. Or you can go ahead and view what they refer to as the processed image, which is, as the name implies, the combination of the surface detail stream with the prominence stream combined together to give you both features, details visible in the disk and the prominences, and then it colorizes it per your settings. And um, really, really works great. Can't say more about how I was thrilled to find Dave's solar recorder. And for outreach in particular, it really works great. If you want to see it in action, if you want to see what some of the processed images uh, came out as, or I should say the processed live images came out as, go right on over to the YouTube and go look up at the eyepiece. You'll see, uh, in particular, I'm showing online now, solar hydrogen alpha activity for April 10th, 2013. Really does show off the capabilities of Dave's solar recorder. Now, there's also a number of other software products that he has there. Uh, Dave Solar Recorder, Dave Solar System Recorder, and Dave's Video Stabilizer. Yours truly, whenever I can get some clear skies, hopes to use the Dave Solar System Recorder to record some Saturn and give you some feedback on that as well, as well as looking at the Video Stabilizer. Just haven't had the opportunity. And as already mentioned, I'll go ahead and be putting up a YouTube uh, video of my, myself using the software product that might be able to help you out on uh, you know getting a head start with the product as well. Now, last but not least, I want to give a shout out. You know, I, I mentioned early on in the show, this particular time of year is really galaxies. You are with Leo high above us. You got Bursa Major high above us. You have Virgo as well. Just areas full of galaxies. 
And a friend of mine has put together a YouTube channel that focuses primarily on galaxies and observing. And I think you should go ahead and check that out. Head on over to YouTube and look at Galaxy Log. Galaxy Log 4565 channel. And they have a number of Galaxy Logs every single month. Uh, they put out one uh, for you. And um, recommended for you to check that out. If you like galaxies, you'll get a real good uh, review here of some of the highlights for this month's galaxies from Galaxy Log 4565's channel there on YouTube. And last but not least, one more site that I'd like to go ahead and give a recommendation to for solar amateurs or for solar observers really, solarham.net. I came across this from Facebook, and it has been a great site for information on solar activity. It gives you the sunspot locations, the numbers, any flare activities. Um, uh, the solar ham ticker, by the way, is, is very good. It gives you an, just uh, events uh, coming up for the sun, post or, or previous events, projected events, uh, etc. It's really a great, great site, and I think you should check that out, solarham.com. All right, so that will wrap it up for this episode of At the Eyepiece. Of course, we air most of the time on Sundays. Don't forget, if you're on the Google Plus Hangout, Google Plus right now, uh, don't forget that you have the virtual star party coming up at... Um, well, it's about 10.30 my time, or I think 10.30, uh, check it out either way. I'm not exactly sure what times they do it or, or the times that are broadcasted, if that's my local time or, or what. But look up the Virtual Star Party in particular if you check out Fraser Kane. He's the publisher of Universe Today, and uh, you circle him, you add him to one of your circles. You'll be up to the minute on all important information regarding the virtual star parties that they go ahead and do. Uh, I wish I was able to join in, but again, I am clouded out again for a Sunday night. So Sundays are just bad for me uh, for virtual star parties. But no doubt, you head on over there, you'll have some fantastic sights to go ahead and enjoy. I really think you will. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. Let me go ahead and share a few more episodes that we have in the works coming up. The next episode, episode 76, is going to be covering Sky Tools 3, my initial impressions on that software product, as well as I'm finally going to post up that Zamel Zoom eyepiece review that I've talked about now three times. That's going to be coming up. After that, on episode 77, we're going to be talking about video astronomy on the cheap, as well as Android lunar apps and more. And then finally, episode 78, is going to be sharing summer star parties and teasing geek details for galaxy observers. All this and more coming up on the next few episodes of At the IP, so please check back here for up and coming show times on that. That'll do it. Here's wishing everybody clear skies, and I sure hope to see you next time at the eyepiece. Thank you for listening to this episode of At the Eyepiece like to participate in a future show as a featured guest, or perhaps you have suggestions for future show topics, send me an email at theipiece at gmail.com. Check out our blog at theipiece.blogspot.com. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Just put in a search for at the eyepiece. I'd like to thank George Wood for his bumper and exit music. This is 8-Bit Junkie, and we obtained that from podsafeaudio.com. So here's wishing all of you plenty of clear skies so that we can all talk about it next time at the IP.